attitude of compromise. Yesterday and today, at the invitation of the UN Secretary General, senior government representatives from the Awami League and the Bangladesh Nationalist Party met and exchanged in dialogue. I commend both sides for seizing this important opportunity. It is a first answer to the expectations of people. A third meeting was agreed between the parts. The leaders have shown statesmanship. It remains critical to reduce tension and to continue to engage in constructive dialogue so as to create a congenial atmosphere. There are numerous measures that can contribute immensely a call by all sides to end the violence, the release of opposition political leaders, and a mutually satisfactory solution to the concerns regarding the election schedule. At this moment, the world is remembering Nelson Mandela's legacy. Please allow me to quote his words from the visit he made to Bangladesh in March of 1997, and he said, a nation united in pursuit of shared goals can overcome the most difficult problems. And I end the quote. I firmly believe there is ground for an agreement. Bangladesh leaders must continue to come together. I encourage both sides to continue their dialogue in the spirit of goodwill and compromise. Bangladeshis expect them to work together constructively to decrease tensions and to find mutually agreeable solutions for free, fair, inclusive, and non-violent elections. On my return to York, I will brief the United Nations Secretary of my visit, and I will share with him the messages and views of those that I have met. Bangladesh is an important member state of the United Nations. It has a powerful voice in shaping the global development and beyond 2050. It is consistently one of the largest two contributing countries to United Nations peacekeeping operations. So much has been achieved since independence. The United Nations team here on the ground in Bangladesh remains deeply committed to supporting the country's drive to development and middle income status. We will also continue to support efforts to strengthen democracy. I and my team that came from New York have enjoyed a tremendous hospitality of the Bangladeshi people. I remain optimistic about the prospects of this country's future. And before closing, I would like to thank you, the members of the press. Please continue your work. Please remain balanced and impartial. And I thank you all for your attention and welcome some questions before I go to another meeting. So, thank you. Should we go question by question? Okay, so let me, again, let me just state the obvious that, as I said, there's ongoing dialogue taking place. Um, I think the very fact that there was agreement to meet, the fact that representatives of two of the main parties here that are being engaged uh, in, in a deadlock situation were able to meet twice during my presence here is in itself a very important agreement. And the fact that both have decided to have a third meeting and to continue to discuss the issues, again, is another important part of the agreement. And as I said, I think this also reflects, and I think it is extremely important to recognize the important leadership, courage that has allowed the parties to face 
Um, I think here I might use this opportunity Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, as well as the opposition leader, Begum Zia, um, and as well those who participated in these talks, in these initial dialogues, which the United Nations uh, essentially helped start. Um, for any form of agreement, there's always a first important step that has to happen, and the first important step has been dialogue which was lacking when we arrived here. So let me just stress again, extremely important that there has been a dialogue and that there's an agreement to continue to dialogue and that these dialogues have been characterized and I would characterize them as having been very constructive and they have been actually addressing how to reduce the tensions that Bangladesh is experiencing and to build confidence so that many issues can be discussed and hopefully to come to agreement. So all I can say, and I will not go into the details of what was discussed. I'm anticipating the questions that might follow. Um, you will have seen that both sides have been also very um, responsible in trying to keep the space of dialogue alive so that these issues can be discussed among the participants. All I can say is that all the issues that are relevant, all the issues that are relevant to this current situation have been raised and discussed constructively. Um, and I can also say, um, having been in, in many hours of these discussions, that both have made concrete proposals that clearly require agreement. So, as you can imagine, people come, they discuss, they present proposals, they have to go back, discuss with their leaders, come back, and this is how dialogue works. So I think it is extremely important that we allow uh, the representatives of the parties to engage constructively. This has to be a solution of the leaders of Bangladesh. This has to be a homegrown solution. This has to be a solution that will meet the expectations and the aspirations of the people of Bangladesh. And we as the United Nations uh, have been very honored that we have been uh, given this important, uh, if you will, uh, the honor of having been asked to help start the first part of this important process. Um, so I think uh, that's one of the reasons that I have said that I am optimistic because without dialogue, clearly, it is very difficult to come to any form of agreement. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. 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 Just to remind everyone, please restrict yourself to one question on the slide. Yes, Mr. Secretary General, it's my honor to be here. I work for the independent. It's an English newspaper that is published from the capital. Uh, I will ask you one question as Mahatma said, but it will have. A and B, so I will speak to one question. Well, let's, let's be clear. I know the A and B happened with a previous visitor here, but in this session we'll only have A. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have a very simple question for you. As you know, that, uh, the whole country was looking uh, towards your business. Uh, I would like to know, have you achieved what you have come to here to achieve? I think I have, yes. I think um, I came here because, as I said, the Secretary General was very concerned and continues to be concerned with two important issues. One is the rising tensions and levels of violence, and two, uh, what had until my arrival here been the lack of dialogue. And so on the one account, and I just answered uh, the questions relating to dialogue, uh, which is the beginning of a negotiation, and those negotiations certainly will have to touch upon how to reduce the tensions, how to create a conducive environment, how to address the issues of concern. So I think um, the Secretary General, who, as you know, is a very uh, important and, and good friend of Bangladesh, I have said this in every mission here, uh, he holds both leaders to very high esteem, and has developed 
a very close relationship with the political leadership of this important nation. And his concern, I think, is to ensure that we are able to create conducive uh, environments and conditions uh, so that, again, elections can be held that are free, fair, credible, inclusive, and peaceful. And so many things now need to continue, I think, among the parties um, so that we arrive at an agreement, at an agreement uh, to make this possible. And again, without dialogue, it's very difficult to have agreement. Okay, no, <laughs> no, and again, I think it's it's important that uh, that we see everything in the in the in the positive manner in which I think my my days here in Bangladesh really have been characterized. I, I have to say that all the leaders of all the parties and all the representatives that I have had the honor to 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 meet and to engage have been absolutely uh, engaging and open with their schedules. Many meetings went way beyond. Uh, the requested time. Um, as you all know, I was meant to have left yesterday. And, uh, you know, uh, the minute we change our departure schedules, usually is everybody's schedule that starts becoming affected. So today was a very, very hectic day. Um, and as you know, many things are happening. Um, so there's nothing to be afraid. It is uh, a scheduling and, um, you know, like I say, uh, I have yet another meeting, and then I'm off to the airport. So that's that's the answer. I mean, there's no 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 request or counter request. It's uh, basically everybody's very very busy, as you know. Yeah, Oscar, my name is Ravi Tejas. I represent Telugu Party. There have been reports that during your course of discussion with the uh, two topics as well as uh, their uh, the issue of whether uh, within the constitutional framework, keeping the Prime Minister and, and cutting some of our power, there is an uh, issue raised by either you or uh, in the course of discussion, as well as uh, the issue that if uh, the UN administer or monitor the elections, then uh, two parties can come together. So can you just uh, tell us whether this particular issue was come up when you met the two, uh, two parties? Let me, let me again, let me just stress, um, I'm not here to go into the details of what was discussed. Um, and I, I, I already said it, and so I'll repeat it again so the question doesn't come up again. Um, the parties, as I said, have raised many issues. All the issues are relevant to the situation that affects this current situation. Um, and many issues were raised, again, in a very constructive, in a very uh, civil, in a very substantive manner, in a very engaging manner. So I think this is what gives me confidence that um, where there is a will, there is a way on many issues. Um, so let me just leave it at that. Um, you know, let's, I think it's important that the representatives of these two parties are able to continue to discuss these issues. And again, like all uh, dialogue, there's a lot of discussion, give and take, proposals, counter proposals, we agree, we don't agree. That's normal. It's not just for Bangladesh, it's a universal manner of conversation, negotiation going on. So um, I won't go into any of the specifics. I will uh, just note that when the parties are ready to share what they have discussed, what they have agreed, they will do so in their own time and in their own manner. I just want one second on the issue of of UN of UN on UN observation. It was another part of the question. Just for you to know, I know it came back. This question was asked in other occasions, and so nothing has changed. I mean, normally, um, you know, the United Nations has stopped doing electoral observation unless there is, you know, a Security Council mandate or a General Assembly mandate, which is not the case here in Bangladesh. I understand. 
other international parties uh, might be uh, or are considering or have uh, or, or you know discussing with the parties whether they will provide um, electoral observation. You had a meeting with the Jamaat leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wondering why did you meet them and do you discuss violent, violent issues with them? With, um, let me just say, we, meet, we've, we have met with uh, everybody that has requested a meeting with us um, and we um, have raised with all the parties uh, issues of violence um, and our concern as they relate to that. Um, so that, that, that was um, you know, the discussion which focused on what we think are the responsibility of all the citizens and all the leaders and all the parties of Bangladesh. This is a collective responsibility to create peaceful conditions for elections. It is the responsibility of all the leaders. Um, I think this is what the people and citizens of Bangladesh are expecting. All the questions are coming from here. I don't know if there's journalists on the other side, so make sure that you know our principle all along has been one of a balanced approach. So. I, I just hope we don't have uh, we don't have you know too many of certain type of uh, journalists on one side and not the other. So anyway. My question is, what would the consequence be if Jamaat Islam were to Sorry, I didn't, I didn't. The Secretary General called the Prime Minister today. Mm-hmm. Right. So, what, if I understood, because there's a lot of echo up here, what, what? What would be the consequences if the dialogue Right, right. Well, whether the Secretary General okay. or the Prime Minister. Yes. And if I may add, if he's a leader of the opposition as well. You already asked your question. <laughs> No, let me just say, um, I think everybody in this room knows uh, most likely what would happen if dialogue fails, so uh, I won't answer that question. I think uh, you, can, you, can, you can answer that question for yourself. I would rather focus on all the things that will be achievable if this dialogue succeeds, and I think uh, that is our role as a UN, is to encourage this dialogue, to ensure that the sides feel that they have the support and the encouragement to do so. Um, in my very short mission here to Bangladesh, I tried precisely to facilitate this beginning, and I'm really very um, recognizant of the efforts and leadership that have been shown by the leaders of the parties to ensure that this could start. Um, again, this, this is a leadership issue. This is a, a decision that took courage. Um, and. I think it's the beginning of, of a way of getting out of a situation that by any account is, 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 is a deadlock, right? And so um, I think in the past at least uh, 24, 48 hours, in what relates to the issues of communication and dialogue, we have gone uh, into a better place, into a safer place, I would say. And we hope that soon some, uh, some agreements, some proposals that have been made can be acted upon, which will start creating, if you will, the type of confidence and movement that can allow to get to other issues that, that, that are equally, if not uh, as important. So um, on the Secretary General, uh, our Secretary General is somebody, as I said, who is very committed, very engaged with the leadership of Bangladesh. Uh, I am sure that uh, one of the reasons uh, that he did call is precisely to acknowledge this very important step. Um, as you know, uh, he's been traveling, uh, getting from uh, communications from Johannesburg to Dhaka in yesterday, which was a moment of remembrance and celebration of the life of Nelson Mandela in South Africa. He's traveling back to New York as I speak. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure the Secretary General will remain very engaged and will continue uh, to engage in the manner that he has through letters, through phone calls, through sending me, and certainly in supporting the very, very important work, the development work that the UN agencies, funds, and programs 
uh, are doing here in Bangladesh, doing a, a tremendous work, a tremendous work uh, on the ground. And, and I think uh, this is one of the reasons that we enjoy such a fantastic hospitality and welcome is that I think you all know and the people of Bangladesh know that the commitment of the United Nations to this country is very sincere, is very genuine. Uh, we have always and hold Bangladesh to very high standards because so much has been accomplished here since independence. The amount of time in which so many achievements have been accomplished is something that is to your honor, it's to the credit. Uh, and uh, like I said, Bangladesh has a very strong voice in the international community. And I think uh, the international community in general uh, expects that Bangladesh continues to move forward in this path of development uh, to achieve its middle income uh, status condition and to prosper and to prosper. And this is one, uh, w one of the reasons that, uh, that the UN Secretary General continues to remain engaged and, and continues to follow events very closely is that we consistently refer to many of the successes of Bangladesh and we share them with many other countries in the world. We say this is what can be obtained. But much of what has been obtained and much of what can be achieved uh, is put to risk in current circumstances where uh, levels of tension and violence and disagreements uh, can get in the way of the process uh, that, 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 that we have been discussing. So that's, we're going to have to go this, this side of the room for sure. Um, Thank you. Uh, this is David. I work for you. It's a private television channel. Mm -hmm. uh, in the wake of the professional political situation in Bangladesh, uh, you have expressed your uh, uh, optimism finally, uh, I think, for the third time in Bangladesh in this way of your visit. Uh, still, the uh, peaceful resolution of the deadlock is possible, and there must be political goodwill and sense of compromise. Did you observe any lack of political goodwill and sense of compromise in the uh, warring political parties? And did you receive or find any specific assurance of cancelling the current election schedule? Uh, thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the question. I mean, let, let me be clear. I mean, I think. Had we seen a lack of goodwill, really, we would not have had two meetings uh, so quickly, one after another. And as I said, uh, agreement also on having a third meeting. So um, again, I think this is an important uh, accomplishment of the parties themselves uh, moving forward. So I think it is only normal that if any of the people sitting in a room trying to agree on issues that for which you know, there's different uh, positions. If there had been a political indisposition, these dialogues would not have continued, right? So I think to your answer, what we have seen here is certainly a movement of goodwill so far, so good. Um, and in terms of, again, the specifics, um, you know what each one of the parties has been raising. Um, and in this process of dialogue, I think the compromise will be precisely to find solutions uh, that are acceptable uh, in order to have uh, free, fair, credible, inclusive, peaceful elections. Thank you. I think we're almost to the last question, but... Um, last, last question. Sorry. Are you moving forward to hold an election, unilateral, and one election? What about canceling the election? What about like I said, many, you know this is one possible issue. There are many, many other issues. Um, and as I said already, all issues of relevance to this situation were brought up and they are being handled in the manner that the two parties have agreed in order to move forward. Well, sir, uh, Gordon Fairclough from the Wall Street Journal. Your, your colleague, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, has called on the government here to halt its plans to execute Mr. Mola. Did you raise that in your discussions with the government, and what do you think the consequences would be for the political dialogue if the execution goes ahead? Right. Well, let me, let me stress that, again, uh, the position of the United Nations as it relates to this particular issue 
has been raised by uh, our UN uh, High Commissioner for Human Rights. I think uh, she is on record as to what the UN position is. Um, suffice it is to say that you know, the United Nations, as you know, opposes the death penalty in all circumstances as a, as a, as a matter of principle. So let me just say this. Um, the, um, the UN High Commissioner, I understand, has made um, you know, last minute appeals. Um, so I have you know, very much focused on the electoral challenges uh, going ahead. And, um, and I, again, want to repeat that what we need to ensure is that the general situation uh, that is required, the conducive environment that is required, is extremely important to ensure that we move forward. And that conducive environment is understood by the political actors. I would maybe uh, think that the people of Bangladesh as well, and that these are uh, issues that um, that you know will will be will be uh, discussed going forward. Um, so I'd I'd rather stay to that. I don't want to you know go beyond what what I'm here to to focus on. Thank you. Last question.